morning, everybody. Call mm -hmm. on and let everybody know it's Friday. And we going to talk about, you know, some good stuff today. What? When it feels like God isn't uh, there or something? Yeah. I know sometimes it seems like um, God doesn't always um, meet our schedule. And so uh -huh. um, we just want to have a good time. We want to thank everybody for just joining in. You made it through the week. TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. And I'm telling you, God is so good. His grace, I don't know about you, that uh, just pushes you through when you kind of get in the hump of the week or, you know, things uh, start happening. And I'm just thankful that um, it was a good week. It, it was, was a good uh, week. Uh, favor and God showed up. Yep. And did uh, things supernaturally. So we are just so thankful for each and every person. We got people logging on from South Africa, Santa Monica. And uh, yeah, just put in the comments what God did this week. I mean, just testify. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. So just Give God a shout out and tell, it, uh, tell, tell it. it, tell it. I mean, he wants to be acknowledged. That's right. Sometimes, uh, you know, these things happen not so we can kind of keep it to ourselves. And and if, if you like tapping now, we, you know, we like to let the testimony get finished. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But just go ahead and, and, and say it, tell it when God does something for you and and um, the blessings of the God of God shows up in manifestation. Say that. Tell it. Oh, my goodness. Somebody got healed. Congratulations, man. Free from family drama. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Closed three deals this week. Go ahead, God. Three deals. Three deals wow. closed this week. And um, we are certainly praying for those in Florida. And... Um, for Hurricane Ian. Yeah, we just thank God. We got reports there from some of our friends that they just got just really showed out. It didn't hit exactly mm -hmm. where. But for those uh, who I think were Fort Myers. Yeah. Yeah, we just we just thank God for, you know, supernatural favor. And that um, regardless of how bad it looks now, it's going to be better. I mean, God is just going to do it right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we pray for you guys, man. And, you know, sure. uh, you know, the lady here lost her husband to brain cancer. And we just, we send our love to you. And we pray that, you know, that God's going to give you just comfort and love and, and you'll, you'll, walk down the path of recovery and be able to share with other people what that means. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we just thank God for you. Uh, somebody said I was behind on my rent and God supernatural, so supernatural favor. Uh, somebody think you need money for everything, but thank God for the favor of God. He's given us favor. And, um, somebody says they're just blessed overall. Uh, sharing videos with family and friends. Um, uh, someone's recovering from their mom passing on in heaven. And, and I tell you, your mom's having a ball in heaven. I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's going to be a, a good time, man. And, um, just think about that every time it, it's, it's, this was kind of like the dressing up room here, the preparation place. And, um, I just thank God that you're strengthening your healing and, um, you know, Taffy and I don't make light of that, that that's a, that's a serious process to go through. It really uh, is. But here's the deal. You go through with God, you know? Yeah, we uh, were talking about that this morning. Just parents who um, transition on, passed on to the other side. Yeah, what was that you were saying about memories? That's why it's important to make memories. And hopefully you do have memories. I mean, that's Good the memories. beauty that stays with you when you... Um, in the natural, do little things, small things. But once a person transitions on, 
uh, they become big things because you have those memories that you can hang on to. And so um, thankfully, we uh, were talking about just the memories that that we uh, have shared with both of our, our parents and uh, grandparents. And it's just a joy knowing that uh, there are so many experiences that we were able to mm-hmm. share together. And, um, you know, there's a brother here. He's, he's with us most mornings. He got hit by a car this past week mm. and had a scar on his face that was noticeable. And he said, now you, you can't hardly even notice it. I mean, just the supernatural protection of God, the supernatural healing of God. I'm so glad you're still on this earth with, with us today. I'm so glad, man. It's just, you know, I can testify about what it happens when you get hit by a car and, and just Satan trying to snatch your life out. And now what you got to do is go before God, because obviously you're important to the plan of God uh, for today. And uh, it's like, wow, God preserved your life for something, you know? Absolutely. God preserved your life for something. So I remember we went through that. Remember one of our daughters, uh, middle daughter got um, fell off the bike and they had projected that she would have to have cosmetic surgery, facial surgery. Could have been a lot worse oh, yeah. than what it was. Skint uh, up the whole side of her face. Yeah. Just yeah. in the street. And thank God that um he healed supernatural her face. You can't even tell. No surgery. Yeah. And so we're believing that same testimony. Uh, yeah. thank God for him just being a restorer. He goes beyond. He's the great physician this he morning. He really is. He really is. He is the great physician. Yeah. Some said they saw angels. I, hey, I believe you so big time. I've seen them and there's going to be an a increase of manifestation of angels. We're just in that time right now. And um, I see Jarrell joined us this morning. I, I prayed, Tap, and I prayed and agree uh, with your families and your babies. And, and we just know all is well because you're just a man of faith and a man of God. And, and we love you and we, we, love, we love all y'all down there in Tampa, but, uh, man, we got friends and families down there that we are believing and thanking God for, you know, Deborah Poe and yeah, Pastor Brian. Use and, your authority, yeah, Jarrell. Thank, yeah. thank God for thank God Pastor for Deborah. She knows the power of prayer yeah. and the power of agreement. Absolutely. And, uh, believers authority. And so yeah. I'm telling you, get in around believers and get in a church that knows yeah. how to release the authority yeah. and cause things to change into yeah. the physical realm. I'm telling you, yeah. it works. Yeah. These are people that just walk in peace, man. I mean, they, 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 <laughs> they ain't get a nut. You know what I'm saying? They just walk in peace and just look around and see what everybody else is doing because they know their God and they that know their God. Hallelujah. You know, great exploits will be done. So I'm just stirred up to see that people are <clears throat> not only walking in their authority, but that they're learning how to live the word of God in a practical manner in their everyday lives. That's part of our vision and assignment. Absolutely. To live the word of God in a practical manner in our everyday lives. And And that's what we're going to talk about today too. In the time that we have just Mm -hmm. talking about the authority that we have, because um, of course we weren't raised this way. You Mm -hmm. um, learn some things, but I'm telling you, what we are understanding now about um, walking this life is just so much more uh, fulfilling than what we could ever, ever dream. And I believe that yeah. God wants you to live a fulfilled life, yeah. each and every one of you, um, and to be able to experience his best. And so that's why I believe you're logged on this morning. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. I, I You know, Fridays, we just kind of like go for it to try to get that word out so we can, you know, and people can kind of like carry it with them and do what needs to be done. It's going to be a great day for you today. And um, regardless of the circumstances that you're facing or the circle that you're standing in today, um, you never stand in a circle by yourself. God is there with you and you just keep doing what you know to do. You don't need to panic. You don't need to jump religious. You just, you just, you just calmly and coolly, continue in your personal relationship with God because God is so awesome that he will do things quietly. I mean, I, I've had God to heal my body and had to 
speak to me and say, you have you re you realize that I don't hurt no more? I mean, that's what he does. Calm, quiet and ease. Calm, quiet and ease. And you just have that kind of day. Believe God for a day where, you know, the spirit of ease comes over every matter that concerns you. The Bible says he'll perfect everything that concerns you. So let the spirit of ease come over you. Hallelujah. The spirit of ease. I just prophesied that over your life right now. A spirit of ease. You know, yeah, yeah. We don't deny the things that are going on around you and in with your life. But we're just saying a lot of times everything happens when you just kind of get at ease. I was talking to, you know, uh, some doctors yesterday and they're born again, spirit filled people. And we were talking about, you know, you can eat the greatest diet in the world. You can eat broccoli all day until you turn into a broccoli. But man, if you don't learn how to cast your care on God and live in the spirit of ease and all those kind of things, it just that's the most important thing you can do is to not let stuff get in your head and get in your emotions. And, you know, Taffy talked years ago how emotions will move you. Negative emotions will move you into negative places. Godly emotions will move you into godly places. But this is the cockpit, your your mind, your emotions. It's the cockpit for life, the center of life. And um, and I just don't think people really understand that. It's like uh, living in a spirit of ease. That's a blessing from the Lord. Uh, living in peace. That's a blessing of the Lord. Living in calmness when everything around you is freaking out. That's a blessing of the Lord, you know, and, and he's not even asked you to live by your peace. He says he said, live by his peace. He said, my peace, I leave you, not the peace that comes from the world, but Jesus peace. So you have Jesus peace today. So pursue that today. Pursue Jesus peace. And uh, yeah, man, it, it, it's sometimes, you know, the Bible says, take no thought saying. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you might bump into something crazy and a thought comes up, you know, you, you say, I, I don't think I'm going to take that. You know, no. you might want to respond with the word. I, I don't think I'm going to go there. I ain't going there with you today. I, I, you know, just watch what happens if you just take this challenge today. And, and you know, I'm going to tell you something. Every time I challenge y'all, I'm challenged the same way. It's amazing. We get off this stream and I walk out the door and the, the very thing I challenge you with, I'm challenged the same way. So I want you to know we're in this together. This is not this thing where, hey, I'm saying this to y'all. Y'all better be. I, every time I say something, I have to make sure. OK, now. Here it comes now. You got to do what you what you just instructed. You got to do what you just preached. And uh, so, yeah, man, it's going to be a great day today. Let's get into this because I think this will bless some people. Yeah. So um, are we going to uh, do Psalms 91? You want to do that? At you want me to do that? We could do that. Later. We could do that or your Psalms 91 equip. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just say I receive it. I receive it. I'm I'm I'm, oh, I'm Psalm 91 equipped. Say that. I'm, I'm Psalms, Psalms 91, 91 equipped. equipped. Amen. I got long life. I got strong life. Amen. Somebody said you just cheated us out of Psalms 91. Man, you got Psalms 91. You know, every now and then we can get right into the to what we want to talk about. But you 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 got it, man. You you know you good. Psalms 91 equipped. That's a powerful statement. To just declare over your life, even look at your children sometimes and say, "Your Psalms ninety-one equip." Praise God. That's right. Amen. And just don't be moved by what it looks like. Um, there's a translation that says, "Harm cannot get through the door." Mm. Harm cannot get. Through Harm cannot get through the, the door. door. We know there are storms that are taking wow. place. Wow. Around us, mm -hmm. and could be even, you know. Um, spiritual storms that maybe some of you are dealing with, but just like Jesus did, be able to find peace and ease yeah. in the midst of the storm. Peace and ease. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Peace be still. Didn't he? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, uh, uh, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. There's nothing wrong with you just because you're going through some challenges and pressures. That just sounds about right. It's just uh, you can take those things that you're going through, those circumstances that you're in, and you can allow those things to help you to mature uh, to a place where God wants you to be so you can carry out what he called you to do. Mm -hmm. And so we'll start this morning just talking about the Lord's Prayer, because I don't know about you. That was the only thing I knew about prayer. Mm -hmm. And um, it took 
just sitting under the word and being taught about what prayer is, because uh, so many times we have to be taught how to pray. Mm. And um, through us being taught, then we can learn what to say um, and how to have a relationship with God, how to approach God. And I think it was under the Old Testament, right, that the Lord's Prayer was prayed and then um, Jesus prayed the Lord's Prayer. And so in so many instances, and even today, a lot of people only know that prayer alone and don't uh, know how to pray to God, how to commune with God, how to talk to God, how to have a relationship with him. Because like me, I didn't know anything about it other than, you know, yeah. I don't know if it was in the Old Testament, but there was when the disciples came up to him and they said, and this is what you're saying. Teach me to pray. He said, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus took what we call the Lord's Prayer and each line became a um, it, it, the Lord's Prayer became an outline. And it's almost like a praise sandwich. You start mm. off with praise and thanksgiving and you end up with praise and thanksgiving. And then in the middle, there's some cool things. And then, of course, under the covenant of grace, a greater way to, to pray came uh, by the Holy Spirit. This is the, you know, we, we always fight the greater, but now we can pray in, in tongues and the Holy Spirit now helps us to pray. So if even praying the outline that Jesus gave was good enough, then, you know, uh, what was the need for the Spirit of God to come and help us to pray? So we obviously needed help to pray. And so the greater thing is the fact that I can now depend on the Holy Spirit to help me to pray. Uh, what he told the disciples, and, and this is why I think it was an outline, because the, the Holy Spirit is going to come in and, and infuse that outline. And so now we can use that outline and then understand the Holy Spirit's part in that. So a lot of times you and I will go and We'll start thanking God. Father, thank you for this day. I mean, I, I go from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Lord, I thank you for, for healing all over. I thank you that there's a miracle in my body. I thank you that you let me sleep. I don't care how many hours. I thank you let me sleep. And I woke up this morning. I thank you for this. And I thank you for that. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed thy names. I die, and then I just go before God in thanksgiving. Uh, I thank you that you're Jehovah Jireh in my life. I thank you that you're Jehovah Makedesh in my life. I thank you that, that there's no other God like you. I've looked around. Before you know it, I'm getting happy. You know, <laughs> hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Well, all that has happened. And so now I have to be sensitive. And, and I'm, I'm doing a minister's conference next week where I'm going to be teaching on hermeneutics. And that's a huge issue uh, with ministers frankly there's just an egregious um output of irresponsible or irresponsibly translating the bible and um and you know my sons and daughters we're coming together i'm going to tell them i'm not going to be telling nobody else but my sons and daughters i'm just going to say listen we got to stop the insanity man we what we call revelation is really reading into scriptures. And when you read into something, you're saying something that's not even there. And so uh, that that's my big concern with this. But here's what Jesus did to even resolve all of that. He says, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and he's going to teach you how to pray. We need to be taught. We're going to teach you how to pray. We do need to be taught. Yeah. We really do. I know we have um, the Internet. We have. um what internet church we've got all this content that is available but we really mm -hmm. have to make up in our minds that if we really want to have a relationship jesus said pray to the father mm -hmm. and the lord's prayer says our father which is in heaven mm -hmm. and so uh and just like you just said teach us to pray we have to understand that these things aren't going to happen by osmosis mm -hmm. and then when you when you ask him to teach you to pray I mean, you, you always have to recognize in scripture what dispensation we're in. And if you teach outside or if you teach from the wrong dispensation, you end up missing it. And the dispensation is a period mm -hmm. in which 
Um, certain things were true. Certain things were true. The covenants were established. And so um, there's the dispensation under the law. And then there's a dispensation, which is under grace. And so Jesus yes. came to fulfill that law. Mm -hmm. And he was, thank God, an example yeah. of how to pray and how to get his prayers answered, how to have a relationship with the father. And he always pointed us to the father. And always, so, always, always pointed us to the father. And that's why we're here today. We're just pointing you, to, pointing the you to the father. We're not here for any other reason other yeah. than to point you to have a relationship with the father, to pray to the father mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus, using the authority that Jesus got and ratified for us that we can stand in his place. Mm -hmm. We're his ambassadors. We're his representatives on the earth. Um, we exercise his authority in his in the earth. We use his name, his faith. Uh, we use his faith. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the first area looking to God. But then the second one is. Um, most of the time we, we start, we keep praying to God to do something he's already done. So our prayer should recognize that he's already done it. And then I am praying, I forgot who gave this definition, but I love it still today. Praying to God is saying what God has already said in his word and being thankful for that. It's like not, not saying, God, do this, do that, do this. All right, now we're violating that, you know, where we are. It's going to God and saying, Father, I thank you that you've done that. I thank you, Lord, that I'm healed. Father, I thank you, and I believe that I've received by faith that I'm, I'm, I'm delivered. I receive by faith that I am, I'm already prosperous. I'm already this. I'm already that. I'm already that. But see, it had to start with, you know, Jesus giving an outline, and He gave us this outline so we can, and 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 that's why I'm saying it's it's pretty cool to be able to understand that outline, so you can see how far we've come from that outline to trust in the Holy spirit and walking in, in, you know, praying, what does prayer under grace look like? How do you unpack that? Right. Praying under the finished works of Jesus Christ, instead of praying that God finished the work, you know, the work's finished. So how do we pray based on the finished works of Jesus versus praying to get him to do it? Cause if you're not careful, you'll end, you'll go from prayer to begging. You know, you'll go to from prayer begging God to do this. Oh, God, do it, do it, do it, do it. And he said, they're like, I already did it. Are, are you going to receive what I've done? Even where spiritual warfare is concerned, spiritual warfare is not fighting the devil to try to get victory. Jesus already got victory. Spiritual warfare is maintaining the victory that Jesus has already obtained. OK, and so Satan's job is to try to knock you off the victory that you already stand on. We're not going from tragedy to victory we're going from victory because that's what we believe we receive victory to more victory and father i thank you that i'm already victorious and so i i give you praise for victory in this area father i thank you that you already got the victory for my healing so i i praise you that i'm already healed and 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 i don't know we sometimes we we we've, we've got to and i i think we have we've got plenty of tape series and stuff on new testament praying and all that kind of stuff but, um, you know, you got in, in the minister's conference, I'm going to share, you know, you got the dispensations of the Old Testament, which was a picture and a shadow. Uh, but you also have the dispensation of the Gospels, which was given testimony of what Jesus has has done and so forth. I'm going to show seven different dispensations that are in the Bible that if preachers don't know about those dispensations, they'll just start crossing hairs. And you have people so confused, they don't know what to do. And it's, and it's just not that hard, you know, us having a better relationship with God, a relationship with God. That's the key because of what Jesus came to do. Yeah. Not worse, not backwards, but because now the Holy Spirit has come and because Jesus, di Jesus died, gave <clears> us <throat> the keys to victory and all those things. We can have a better relationship. Yes. It, better. And it, because it's built on better, better promises, yeah, better, better covenant, promises, better covenant, and um, just be an expectation for the better, the better. Man, I love that. The better, the better. A lot of times, you, you know, if if you've been doing something all your life in your relationship with God, 
and, and maybe you're not aware that the better is here. Uh, nobody's really just going to kind of be going after you to trying to say that's wrong. That's wrong. That's not necessarily what we're saying. What we're saying is if the better has come, seek the better. I mean, that's God loving us to saying, you know what? I know you've been doing it that way. I know when I was on the earth, I said this, I did, but the better has come now that I have risen from the dead. There's a better promise. There's a better way to pray. There's a better way to give. There's a better, better, better. We're more concerned about, oh, and you're, you know, you're offending me because you're going against my tradition of doing that. No, I'm trying to get you to pursue the better. Yes, there's a better way. Yeah. That is what God wants. And that's what we're believing that you'll experience the, the better, better because the better has come. And so that's what it's all about, uh, pursuing the better and experiencing the better. You know, women could not Amen. have a relationship under the old covenant. I mean, they were, um, there was a court of women, there was a certain distance that they had to have from the Ark of the Covenant. And they, uh, many people had to pray to the priest in order to have their prayers presented. And so the better. Yeah, man, that's crazy. The better has come for us. Yeah. You know, when you talk about, that's a perfect illustration of rightly divided in the word. You know, we have condemned women all around the world to cover their head because of one conversation with one church. Oh, goodness. You <laughs> I don't even want, I don't even want, I, I don't oh. even want to get into that, boy, because it's like, dude, it's, there's a reason why it spread like that and people are confused because you're mixing stuff that don't need to be mixed and the better has come. And so now you've got denominations that say women need to, where's a little dolly? They need to cover their head. They need to they need cover to do their this head. And do that. They need and to cut your hair because you can't cut your hair because your hair is your glory. Yeah. It's, just, it's your covering. And it's just, you know, so, oh, you know, we're going to deal, we're going to deal with that. And, and, and also the fact that we have, uh, because of Jesus, we stand on equal ground. There's a better way for women. There's a better way for relationships. There's a better way for a man to to love his wife and not have to be in such insecurity that you have to call up a false sense of superiority to cover up your insecurity or your inferiority. And now because the better has come, we can sit and we can stand side by side. Yep. Yep. And that's what God wants. The be- He says it's much better for you to live uh as partners in marriage versus uh in dominating one another see heirs together yeah so what happened was he gave us dominion over all things not over each other but he gave us dominion over all things and because of sin that started in the garden uh that sin produced inferiority for all have sin and fallen what short, short of the glory of god short. that's what inferiority is that feeling and sense of falling short feeling insignificant feeling and so what happened, you, we moved from having dominion over all things to trying to dominate all, all things, including people trying to dominate. Yes, so the problem, fine. the problem is you're trying to you, you're, you're you're covering up the issue of inferiority. You got to You got to fix the inferiority and so you won't have any need to kind of try to cover up with a false sense of superiority mm-hmm. and, and 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 it's this thing that you just try to dominate people and dominate people i'm telling y'all this because um somebody i know is getting ready to start dealing with some serious issues on on this the equality issues got to be dealt with it, it's it <laughs> are you all ready for it i guess that's the thing yeah yeah i really that's the truth wanted to really get into some deeper stuff when I started teaching on it years ago. And I just kind of, they weren't ready, babe. Uh, pull back from it. But, you know, I realized that, um, it has to be at the right time. And so I'm just trusting God for the right time to, yep. to be able to deal with, that's with true. some of those things, but that's true. We're almost out of time. And, um, I guess more than anything else, we just want you to, realize that um the better has come the better has come and yeah. the father wants the better for you and we're in agreement with you for uh you to experience the better in every area of your life yeah. 
And that's why he wants you to have a relationship. That's why he wants you to pray, spend time with him, um, get to know him. And um, as a result, your life will be for the better. Yeah. You know, prayer is just a part of the relationship. Uh, but the whole thing we're talking about is a personal one on one relationship with God. That's going to open the door to a lot of things. The better is going to be revealed as you get to know him and you allow him to minister and speak into your life and not know him from a religious perspective, but from a personal perspective outside of church, you know him at the mall, you know him in the restaurant, you know him in your relationships and marriages, you know him. It's not this thing where your relationship with God is solely based on you going into the building. You have a relationship with God in or out of the building because that is now who you are. You are whoever you are in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, experiencing the better. And when things don't happen like you thought they would happen, you know him. You yes, I'm, Listen, she's going to start something. That is the truth. When things don't happen, I remember when the pandemic hit. I, I said the strangest thing. When the pandemic hit and they ordered everybody in our city to stay at home and we couldn't have church. And I thought, well, I don't even know where it is going. And then I opened my mouth. I said, I still have you, Lord. And that was so calming because no matter what was going to get back, what was getting ready to happen. It was like, I still got you because at the end of the day, that's what it was about. I still got you. Yeah. Can you say that in the middle of what you were just talking about, whatever's going on in your life, what, it, what, it, even when it doesn't happen the way you want to happen or things don't turn out when you turn, you still have him. You have him. Hey, man, that's that's, that's all you word. need. That's and you have to develop you that relationship you, just yeah, like you develop. You prayer. You yeah, you got to develop a relationship. And there is a better way to pray. And I wish we had time to teach. It sounds like a series. There is a better way to pray. And I think it's important to start off with the outline that Jesus gave us. And then move into after Jesus was raised from the dead and 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 Paul comes in with the grace of God and, and adds to that. It's just it's just good stuff to 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 look at. So, yeah, uh, we're going to let y'all go because we got some stuff we got to do. Hope you and, were blessed um, today. Encouraged. Yeah. Motivated, inspired. It's going to be a good weekend. Good stuff. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great weekend. Yeah, I'm going to finish up um, the series on humility. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to be a, a good deal to, to deal with. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for joining us. Pray for us as we will pray for you. And in my Baptist church, which you, we used to say, we solicit your prayer. That's right, because the doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. After the fifth offering. Thank you, Lord. You know, oh, Lord, <laughs> I'm just playing. Y'all, I'm just playing. Don't get mad at me. Like, that's what you're talking about. I'm just playing. I'm, yeah. I'm just playing. Hope Love to see you on Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and weekend. We'll see you on Sunday. God bless you. Bye-bye, everybody.